Well, I, I don't think I need to go into the detail of what NADs are standing for and how important they are in the metabolism. So, of course, uh, in the studying mitochondrial disorders, we mainly use mouse models. And in 2014, we have published a study when we actually used a mouse model for mitochondrial myopathy, where we uh, treated the mice with NR. And uh, they, at the same time, the, in, uh, in Switzerland came a similar study where they also treated uh, mitochondrial diseases with the NR. And th this is an interesting study where it shows that NR actually helps the, uh, improve the muscle metabolism of those animals. And of course, the results were so interesting and important that we thought that this should be transformed also to the human clinical trials. But unfortunately, uh, the transformation from mouse to human is not always so simple. So uh, with the mouse, you can just take uh, whatever tissues or cells, send it uh, to a mass spec facility and wait for weeks and months for the results. But if you want to do an intervention in the humans, uh, that's not really what you can do. So you you want to and you need to uh, follow up the patients. And the easiest tissue in the humans where to follow the NADs would be blood. But uh, at that time, we actually didn't find any technology or any possibility how to, in real time, measure NADs from blood. And uh, one colleague of mine and the current CSO of NADMED, Lilia Euro, took up the challenge and started developing an ADSA. And she was uh, very successful and developed something what we now call NADMED technology. And there we start with uh, any, um, any material, blood or tissues. We do one-step extraction where we get all the extracts in, uh, and uh, with the extract we can then divide into different parts. We treat them and then we analyze them individually, each metabolite in a single plate. And uh, this whole uh, thing can be, or the whole analysis can be done in uh, any research lab using regular uh, equipment, so you don't need to uh, use any uh, sophisticated, uh, sophisticated equipment, and the results are equal to, uh, with the accuracy to mass spec. So using uh, this technology, then we were able to proceed with a clinical trial where we had uh, six uh, mitochondrial myopathy patients, and we already at the beginning established that their NAD levels in the blood was definitely uh, lower than in the controls. And after six weeks of intervention with niacin, their NAD levels increased and stayed high throughout the time. Also, uh, in this paper, we also showed that the muscle NAD levels increased and the uh, patients did really, really well afterwards. One question then, of course, afterwards, uh, many papers uh, studying NAD metabolism in humans and mice and clinical trials then appeared. But one thing that stayed kind of still open was what is actually the normal range, what we are comparing our patients to. And so with using the NADMED technology, we were then able to establish what is now called the normal reference range based on 300 healthy individuals. And this is in the whole blood uh, range of NAD plus and NADH. We still were then, uh, interested in the main question, which would be what are the effects of actually healthy people taking the NAD boosters like uh, niacin, nicotinamide, ribosart, or NMN. And uh, that's why we took the controls from our original clinical trial uh, that had uh, niacin for 16 weeks. There was an increased dose uh, from 250 milligrams per day to 1,000 milligrams, and we, of course, sampled them throughout the time. And we focused purely now on the healthy individuals. And here you can see that we can monitor with NADMED technology the increase in NADs in the blood. Here's the green is the normal range that we have established. And you can see that the, the levels are nicely increasing throughout the time. But also what is interesting is that um, both of these metabolites then reach a saturation level, which is uh, for NAD plus, it's an AD, um, between 85 and 110 micromolars in blood. And then for NADH, it's about 2.5 micromolars. So the NAD levels do not increase uh, endlessly, but they all reach a saturation. When we still focused more on the controls, we were looking into the glucose metabolism. 
And already at the zero point, point, it was clear that the glycated hemoglobin is actually correlating in the blood uh, with, uh, with the levels of NAD+. Plus, when we took all the time points throughout the whole clinical trial, then there was a strong correlation with uh, um, insulin resistance, uh, serum insulin, SC peptide, and the uh, glycated uh, hemoglobin in the whole blood correlated with both NAD plus and NADH, suggesting that there are negative effects correlated with the increase of NADs over the normal range. We looked then further also into a detail about weekly where the NAD uh, levels are going and where this uh, glucose metabolism is developing. And you can see that uh, the levels of fasting glucose, the insulin, res in, uh, the fasting insulin and the HOMA index is, they are all increasing uh, significantly from the point where in the blood, the level of NAD plus is close to, four, close to 50 micromolar uh, NAD. Same here, the insulin is then significantly starting to increase from this much onwards. And uh, this is not the, we are not the only ones who actually show there is a negative effect of also increasing the NADs. And this is a study from Bergen University where they treated the uh, Parkinson's patients with high doses of uh, NR. They used uh, three grams of NR per day. And also in this study, they showed that when uh, they treated them with uh, NR, then already from the third day, there's a huge increase, you know, there's an increase in homocysteine, there's an increase from the placebo control group to the uh, NR study group. Uh, and the same as, it, uh, as in our study, the increase when it's the, uh, is from when the NADs are reaching close to 50 micromolar. Uh, uh, micromolar NAD plus in the blood. And then there's another study that uh, came also very recently that, that they showed that uh, an excess of uh, NAD boosters or the excess of uh, NAD and their breakdown points to 2PY and 4PY are actually having a, a vascular inflammation uh, effect and they are contributing to the risk of cardiovascular disease. So in a summary, the, our technology actually is the only technology that now can from one uh, sample uh, measure all the four forms of NADs and two forms of uh, glutathione, including a blood uh, sample. And uh, we have verified that uh, we can identify the patients that they actually are in the need of NAD supplementation. Um, and then uh, we also show that there is a negative effects associated with highly increasing NAD levels. So it's highly important to uh, measure the NADs in the blood, to identify the people, to be able to supplement, uh, giving the guidance on the supplementation and adjust the dose according to the need of the patient. And here I would like to uh, thank you for, uh, to our uh, my colleagues, Lilia Euro and uh, Professor Anu Somalainen's group, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>